An unexpected sequel to a movie that I unexpectedly really liked. That oddly enough came out before the movie that I, I really liked. What? The Driver is the sequel to the apocalyptic zombie flick Dead Earth. We follow Mark Dacascus's aptly named Driver as he goes on a journey across the post-apocalyptic zombie world to get his family to safety. A little while back, I reviewed a little zombie flick called Dead Earth. Now, I really liked Dead Earth. I thought it took a different approach to the tried and true formula of zombie films. So when I heard that there was already a sequel to Dead Earth, I was looking forward to seeing it. Upon looking into it, I found that this movie actually came out before Dead Earth, even though a lot of the film takes place after the events of Dead Earth. Some of it, I guess, is going on at the same time. They overlap just a little bit, but the vast majority of the movie does take place after the events of Dead Earth. So I thought it was kind of weird that this one came out first and then Dead Earth came out, and apparently they're planning a third one that is gonna take place in between these two movies. Or something, I, I really don't know, but I do know that that third film has not been made yet. While Dead Earth focused more on two characters within this little slice of the world and how they're getting along, this movie has a much broader approach to it. While ultimately it is about Mark Dacascus and his family, there are a lot more characters in this movie and it is a lot more action focused than Dead Earth was. And it kind of suffers for that. Much like Dead Earth, the practical effects in The Driver are pretty good. This movie does, however, employ a few more digital effects than Dead Earth did and those don't fare too high. It's not really a CGI fest or anything. Honestly, I don't really know if there's any CGI in the traditional sense in this film but it does have a fair amount of green screening or blue screen backgrounds in some parts and it really stands out like a sore thumb. Being called the driver, you can imagine that there's a fair amount of the movie that does take place in a car. And those scenes in the car are really just kind of all over the place. Sometimes you can tell that they were on location filming with the camera in the car and it driving down the road, and all that looks fine. But a lot of the time you can tell that they're on a soundstage with a green or blue screen background. And those parts just don't look good at all. Like so bad that it's pretty damn distracting during these scenes. Beyond that though, I will say that the movie does more or less look good. It's shot well, it doesn't have a cheap look, it is minimalist a lot of the time, but it does look good overall. Which make those in-car scenes stick out even more, because they look so bad compared to everything else that you're just like, why the fuck did you do this? The action, which there is a fair amount more in this movie than there was Dead Earth, is shot really well. Actually, that's probably the highlight of the film from a technical perspective. You could tell that they put a lot of time and effort into the action scenes, and the people that are performing the stuff are professionals. And it helps that the main character, the driver, played by Mark Dacascus, does come from a martial arts background and he's a pretty athletic guy to begin with. You get to see him doing all these stunts and performing all these cool moves. So that really helps sell the whole thing. And that works because the action scenes, especially this big raid that happens at a compound, all look really good and are pretty exciting. The story here is nothing that we haven't seen before. I'm not saying it's bad, but it's not really breaking new ground. It does flesh out this world that we were introduced to in Dead Earth a little bit more and gives you a little bit more of an idea of what all is going on on a grander scale. A little bit. But beyond that, the focus is more on the driver and his family. Some stuff happens and they're forced to leave the place they've been and they have to get to this safe haven. I mean, that's nothing really new. But of course, there's a twist. I guess this part could be a minor spoiler, even though I think that the trailer pretty much gives it away because it is a key part to the overall story. I won't say who, I mean, you're gonna know who and you're gonna be able to figure it out, but I'm not gonna just outright say who, but there is a character on this journey who has been bit. And throughout the journey, this character wants to keep this bite a secret so that everyone else doesn't freak the fuck out. Also, so it's that this character can have the last few days with family not being like a, a pity party and they can just enjoy the time together as, as a family without this fear of this character's death looming above them at every turn. During that time this character wants to make sure that they pass on everything to everybody that they'll need to survive in this world. Now while the twist of a character being bitten and their imminent demise on the horizon isn't anything new in this genre, I do like the way that they executed it here for the most part. These are the best parts of the movie where this character interacts with 
family and is trying to pass these things on to them and just spend time with them because while they don't know that their time is limited, this character does and wants to get as much out there as they can in a short period of time. So while everything in this movie wasn't executed flawlessly, I thought that that dynamic was done very well here. However, there are a few aspects of the story that I didn't take to as well. One of which being some of the other characters in the movie's motivation to do some of the things that they do is just fucking stupid. Without spoiling anything and saying what it is, there is a character that says that they did this really, really, really bad thing that just fucked over a whole lot of people because someone wouldn't let them drive a car. And this comes up in a fairly serious part of the movie, and when the character says it, it's just, it's kind of laughable. It breaks it all, and you're just like, what the, what? Really? That That's your big fucking motivation? Get, get the fuck out of here. There's also the last third of the movie, which surprisingly enough is one of the better parts of the movie, How? However, if you watch this movie the way chronologically it was intended before Dead Earth, it more or less gives away the ending of Dead Earth. Maybe not every bit of detail from the ending of that movie, but it does give away something that pretty much is the main part of tension and suspense in the end of that movie, i.e. who all is going to survive at the end of that movie. Because characters from that movie intersect with these characters in the end of this movie. And while it was neat to kind of see these characters you know from that movie coming together with these new characters and kind of see what they're doing after the end of that movie, if you haven't seen Dead Earth and you watch this one first the way it's meant to be, then it pretty much just ruins any suspense as far as who's going to survive the end of the last movie or the, the next movie or who the fuck survives Dead Earth. So it's kind of a catch-22 when it comes to making a movie like this that overlaps with another one so much. And while this one technically and chronologically should come first, if you're going to watch these movies, I would say watch Dead Earth first and then The Driver. Speaking of the ending, while it's not wholly unsatisfying, it's not really anything great either. It actually leads into something you want to know more about and just kind of cuts off there. That and the ending of the movie, really just a lot of the movie overall, is pretty predictable. Doesn't mean there's no enjoyment to be derived from it, but overall it is predictable. You're not going to be surprised much here at all. And then that brings me to the performances. Probably the one thing in this movie that does the most damage out of everything. This movie has some really bad performances, especially in contrast to the other things that are in the movie that are of a higher quality. I don't need my zombie movie to have Oscar caliber performances, and that's not what I'm asking for. That's not what I was looking for. But holy shit, a lot of the performances in this movie are just fucking abysmal, including the biggest name actor in the movie, Mark Dacascus. While his performance is a little bit better than everybody else's, he is still pretty damn bad for at least the first half of this movie. Not saying the second half's great, but the performance does tend to get a bit better in that second half of the movie. That and the last third of the movie, some of our characters from Dead Earth show up and their performances are fairly good here as they were in that movie. But holy shit, you gotta weather through that first half of the movie first. And that is a tall order unto itself. Which really surprised me coming off of the last movie, Dead Earth, because both of these movies are made by the same people. So I somewhat expected there to be some sort of parody in the quality of the performances from both movies. But oh shit, no, I was fucking wrong, man. The vast majority of the performances in at least at least the first half of this movie are fucking cringeworthy at best. It's really just everybody. There's not really anybody who is above everyone else in the performance department. There are a couple that are far below everybody else, one of which being a character we meet in the first scene that is riding with Mark Dacascus, which coincidentally is the guy who makes the comment about his motivations being not being able to drive the car, and also the leader of this colony that they're in in the beginning of the movie. This guy is like really bad. It doesn't even seem like this guy's acting in the same movie. He shows up on screen and it's like he's doing some exaggerated version of King Lear or something. I mean, this guy's just fucking out there. Everybody else is right here in their bad little bubble of acting and he's like way the fuck over here just out in the middle of fucking nowhere. It's really bad. Like, the performances in this movie are so bad, they just kind of nullify all the other good things in the movie. I really wanted to like this movie more than I did, mainly because it came off the heels of the really entertaining and well-made Dead Earth. And while it's not like absolutely terrible, 
its shortcomings are pretty damn prevalent. Its story, while it has its moments, is overall pretty vanilla. The special effects are at one moment pretty good, and at the next moment pretty fucking bad and distracting, and it's got some of the worst fucking performances this side of the Toxic Avenger. However, it does have well-executed, entertaining action scenes, and the last third of the movie is a definite step up from the rest. And those things are what save this movie from a lower rating. Because at best, The Driver is barely worth checking out on Netflix. There's some neat things in this movie. It's not all bad. But there's also some pretty fucking bad things that are pretty fucking bad. If you saw Dead Earth and enjoyed that, this one's worth checking out. But keep that bar low. Don't look forward to a lot out of this one. So there it is, guys. My review of The Driver. If you enjoyed and want more content like this, hit that subscribe button and help my little channel grow. If you liked what I had to say, give me a thumbs up. If not, let me know in the comments below why. And as always, Stay sexy, Birmingham. You sleep tight. And don't let anything bite. So I feel like this movie could have been called something else than The Driver. The title doesn't really lend itself very well to this type of movie. I mean, when you hear The Driver, you don't really think of a post-apocalyptic zombie movie. I mean, well, yeah, I get it. He does drive around in the movie. I don't feel like driving is his defining quality. It's not just the name either. It's the poster, too. I mean, look at this. Why would you look at this and think it was a zombie movie at all? The name, the poster, nothing about this conveys anything to do with the story of this movie to you, the viewer. I mean, I, I gotta wonder how many people have watched this movie thinking that it was something totally different from what it is. Like they're expecting some like Jason Statham kind of transporter type of movie because that's kind of what that looks like. And instead they get this low budget zombie horror flick. I mean, either way, they're gonna be pretty fucking disappointed, so. There you go.